There's been a lot of discussion about the wave of pop, punk and rock wave of protest music that swept America between 2001 and 2005, as large swathes of both the American and international public became increasingly disillusioned with George Bush's increasingly violent response to international terrorism. The trauma that reshaped American and world politics, it then the response to that gave rise to a wave of teenage dissent against the authoritarian regime. Dissent that was given voice by several inspirational bands of the era. From my perspective in the United Kingdom, the most obvious, perhaps the most culturally significant export from the USA at this time on this topic was Green Day's seminal album, American Idiot, which is a rare beast that combined political outrage with hard-hitting corporate rock. I love American Idiot. It's perhaps the only Green Day album that truly stands the test of time. But pretending that they represent Bush-era protest music does the genre a massive disservice. I will always lean towards bands like Rise Against, a band who went from strength to strength from 2004 to 2011, a period that culminated with the album Endgame, which appeared to ask, now that Bush was gone and Obama now occupied the White House, were things really any better? It's one of the biggest problems with protest music. You can shout and rage against the injustice, but no one will ever respond to shouts of, this must stop, if you don't accompany the argument of real, achievable alternatives. But for me, the rage, the anger, the lunacy of how mad the world really was during those heady times is best summed up by the raw intensity that accompanies the American Armenian band System of a Down. With their first full public album released in 1998, the band had become instantly recognisable for hard-hitting, politically insensitive but amazingly creative take on the genre. This band did not play like any other metal bands at the time and their signature song, Chop Suey, combines classical inspiration, a heavy bass riff, a contemplative discussion on suicide, a prayer to a forsaken god, and lots of terrified screaming. Now, I'm not against screaming in metal music. I, I just think it needs to be justified. Now, System of a Down is a band that certainly offers this justification. They have both melody, lyrics and theming that bring the listener to a moment of emotional intensity where screaming with either rage or delight is the only rational response. So add, we're not raging specifically against George Bush, not personally, although they certainly were not fans of the president. No, he was just a symptom and a response to a world that had turned deranged in so many, many terrifying ways. They don't sing about American politics specifically, they do talk about the dangers of heroin, pornography, violence and war. Not as a generalisation, but war is a terrifying, all-encompassing death of the soul. And though I was aware of their signature song, Chop Suey, it was 2004 and then 2005 where I discovered their duology albums, Mesmerise and then Hypnotise. Some might say that these albums represent a slight change in tone from the band, it brings out a softer, more sensitive approach that feels like someone being pulled into a fever dream. But like any delusion, when the rolling pain hits, it hits hard. The pounding relentless drums, the clean but muddy riffing guitars, the intense yet ethereal high-pitched vocals that can both soothe and inflame you, switching from raw passion to tired exhaustion at the drop of a hat. These two albums had so much strength behind them, from the political rage of BYOB, bring your own bomb, discussion of revenge, aggrandizing male enhancements, violent pornography, the quite prophetic discussion of the problems in the Hollywood scene, and just the death of rock and roll in general. The whole thing is top and tailed, first track of Mesmerize and the last track of Hypnotize by Soldier Side. What can I say about Soldier Side? Well, for everyone who learns to drive, there comes a moment where you climb into the car, your license in hand, aware that this is the first time in your life where you have complete control. Because the whole time you're learning, you need to be supervised. There's either a competent trainer or an adult or a friend who has a license who can instruct you and theoretically rest control of the car if the need arises and give you instruction and help. But then once you've got your license, 
No, you can step in and you can drive on your own with complete freedom. Freedom within the limits of your local road laws, of course. And you can put on the car radio whatever song you want to celebrate to celebrate the liberation of the open road. For me, Soldier's Side was that song. And I have no regrets. But then there was silence. Sister Down went on hiatus. They reformed and went on tour. And then they went on hiatus again. Absolute silence from the band for over 15 years whilst we waited anxiously, wondering, dreaming, with the question, would there be more? Until now, finally, in November 2020, to raise money for the Armenia Fund, System of Down has released two new songs. Two songs that speak up to the dire war raging in the band's ancestral homeland. The world is a different place, both politically and musically, than the one they left behind in 2005. Now, Soad was a cultural touchstone for some of the most formative, important years of my life. But then I moved on, always looking back with fondness on these albums. I, I want to know, I need to know, how these new songs speak to the legacy of a band I loved. Okay, here we are, System of Down YouTube page. And as you can see, the last new music was 11 years ago. Um, Bounce, for some reason they re-released that audio four years ago. But here we are, three days ago. I can't believe I didn't see this when it came out. But it's still in the opening week, it's still brand new. Protect the land and genocidal humanoids. Let's have a look. Okay, <laughs> that system went down on, right? Oh, that was fun. I've not heard that sound, not new, in years, and it's great that that's the old band. But there, there is the first song. Okay, protect the land. It's weird. I've, it's weird to hear system went down actually talking about things in a. I don't want to say it in a positive light because this the situation they are. They are doing, they have come back for a reason, they have made the song for a reason because things in their home in, in, uh, in Arktash and Armenia are not good and I would encourage anyone who cares about this band to look up their history because there's deep, deep traumatic conflict. There's also deep traumatic conflict just in America because the bands in recent years come out almost with polarised views on their views of Donald Trump. So they, they've, I presume one of the things that's been restricting them from making new music over the last few years has been that they don't see politically eye to eye on a lot of issues in modern politics. And given how traumatic the creation of system and music must be, um, how, how can you embrace lunacy when you don't agree on the fundamental aspects of reality? How can, as I, I pitched right at the start saying Persistent of Down seem to be protest music when it's protesting against the derangement of the world. And the problem with Donald Trump is he, and I, I don't, this is not going to be, I'm not going to set where you should think about politics, but Donald Trump is the response of a large portion of society that considers a lot of what's going on in the world problematic. And the dividing line comes down to whether you believe Donald Trump is the solution to all of the trauma going on or a symptom of all of the trauma going on. And when the the creators of the system done as an album, they themselves can't get behind that. It's completely understandable that they would want to make music of this genre and this style. They couldn't get together that way. But so what's what's happened in in our in Armenia is is one thing they can unify behind. And I suppose that results in why Percent Land feels like quite a positive song. It, as in it's like they they see their differences they see there's things that they can't agree on but this this one topic they do agree and they will unite which ends up in a song that feels much more it's not uplifting this is this is a tragedy but there's there's people being people and doing what they need to do in that and it Oh, I, I, I wrote and recorded my script for the first half of this video before listening to these songs. I, 
I, this is quite prescient. I, I compared, so I, I drew a line saying, if you want to listen to protest music, you may have heard of Green Day. Like Bush era protest music, Green Day. Me, for me, Rise Against was always the, the band I turned to, but Sister Down was my touchstone, the, the flame that lit this. Well, after American Idiot, Green Day never produced anything that, for me, hits that high culture bar again. Arguably, I would say they never hit that high culture bar before American Idiot, but they for that one album but they did after the success of American Idiot they did get one moment of international recognition when after Hurricane Katrina they wrote they made a a song uh, about the return of the Saints and it was essentially they, they teamed up with U2 from memory I can't remember the name of the song but they teamed up with U2 and they made a video what if what if George Bush brought all of the soldiers in the army back from Iraq what if they cancelled the war and they just we just put everything into humanitarian area and rescuing people from these natural disasters. And wouldn't the world be a better place if we did that? And that, for me, was the moment where I thought, okay, it's the same sound as American Idiot, but the 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 fundamental philosophy was American Idiot was it, it was a pointing at the chaos of the American political regime at that particular moment. Um, the the single they did with you too was just, I mean. It, it was heartfelt and meaningful, but it didn't have the lunacy. It couldn't afford to have the lunacy and protect the land. Doesn't that, that doesn't mean I don't like it. It's it's definitely the most straightforward rock metal song I've heard System of Down do almost ever. But that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's different. But I, I was getting it the halfway through. I just went. I feel like they've. It's taken them 15 years, where it only took U2 and Green Day 15 months to follow up American Idiot with their their big. Um, single but yes but then uh, it's all yeah thank god they released two songs because the genocidal humanoids is almost like a reaction to that is that maybe protect the uh, protect the land was too conventional a song so they had to do a completely off the wall soad album and this harks back to the early soad so before mesmerize and hypnotize which i don't know where was the melody i like the melody but it doesn't mean, yeah, no, it was good. Ah, oh, it's nice to have System of Down back. It's nice to hear new music from them after 15 years. And anyone, if, you're list, if you've listened to this whole video and you've not heard of System of Down, System of Down please look them up. Um, start with Chop Suey. Start with that one song. Just listen to it as a single, look it up. And then if you like that, if you think there's some interesting stuff going on in there, if you like the harder aspects of it, those first two albums are amazing. If you like the melody, Mesmerize and Hypnotize are amazing. And please, and can't comment on these two new songs that Sister Down have put out without pointing at it. They clearly have made this music as part of a fundraiser for a campaign. And I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on what's going on out there, but educate yourself if you can. And if you believe in what Soad are saying, and if you like the music, uh, which is freely available on YouTube and several other channels, support them, and you you know that they will. They've been consistent about their their protest music. It was always for a purpose. There was lunacy, but it was their cultural heritage that they were fighting to save. That was as true 15 years ago as it is now.